right, I think it's about that time. Here we go. It's Roots Live. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Well, welcome to episode number 10. Holy cow, we got 10 episodes under our belt. Wow. Makes me feel kind of warm and fuzzy inside, maybe. Just a, just a little bit. Hey, it's our Wednesday night broadcast, Roots Live. Very excited to have you all here joining us on RootsWiki.com. Today's date is Wednesday, June 6th, 2012. It's currently, oh, 6.08 Pacific time, and it's a little after 9 on the East Coast. I am your host. My name is Scotty Brown, broadcasting from beautiful Puget Sound, Washington. Thank you very much for our advertiser, Swappa.com, tonight. Give it up for Swappa.com. These guys helped me out this week. It was great. Swappa.com. It's the very best way to buy and sell gently used Android devices. I stuck uh, stuck my Sensation 4G up there. And uh, uh, within an hour, it was sold. Bam, like that. It was great. Had the money in my PayPal. Loved it. It was great. Uh, let's get to tonight's guests. Get to the outline of the show. And uh, we'll get the show rolling. So first up, I got a good friend of mine. Lots of fun. He's uh, one of the developers over at Team Gummy. Everybody, give it up for the alcoholic, the drunkard, Mr. Adam Fish. Me? Me? <laughs> alcoholic? What? <laughs> Something like that. What's up, dude? How are you? Doing good, man. On vacation. Oh. On vacation, I still show up for Roots Live. That's right. You're uh, you're in Arizona or something, right? Yeah, I'm on vacation with my girl. Gosh, and you still took time out of your night to join us. I couldn't I, think of a better way to relax. I, I feel special. I mean, uh, hopefully you're enjoying your vacation in a way that uh, that I would expect you to. Uh, I don't remember much of yesterday, if that's what you're asking. <laughs> Perfect, man. That's great. Uh, our other guest tonight, uh, you know him, you love him. He is pocket-sized, and uh, he's like that chihuahua that just doesn't stop. Everybody, please give it up for uh, Ken Kiger, also known as R2 Does Inc. What's up, dude? Not so much. I barely made it on today, man. I saw that. I'm on an opposite schedule, so uh, I woke up like just in time. It was perfect. You know, I'm looking at those gauges in your ears, and eventually those gauges will be bigger than your head. <laughs> hey, that's what I'm working on. That's my goal. <laughs> awesome. Well, hey, man. hey guys. I uh, appreciate you both being here. It's great to see you. Uh, thanks for coming on the air tonight. Uh, we got a couple things we're going to run down to, run down and talk about tonight. We're going to talk about the Samsung Galaxy S3. Uh, that's kind of shaking some stuff up, and I, I think that uh, it's a good thing. And then also, uh, there was an article, two articles actually, that were published over on RootsWiki.com. Uh, titled Collision Course, Data Versus Cost. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the, uh, the carriers and, uh, and, and data and, and kind of the whole movement to the cloud and, and kind of how things are really not looking too good for consumers in the wireless industry. So uh, let's get right into our Samsung Galaxy S3 discussion. Uh, I want to spend some time on this because this really, this is, this is pretty damn important. Uh, even if you're not a fan of Samsung or if you're not a fan of... Uh, the Galaxy line, or even not a fan of the Galaxy S3, uh, this phone has the potential to really uh, move Android forward quite a bit and uh, and and uh, and really have a great impact. Uh, the specs on it: 4.8 inch HD Super AMOLED display. Uh, in the U.S., it's going to be a dual core Snapdragon S4 CPU clocked at 1.5 gigs, 2 gigs of onboard RAM, uh, 16 or 32 gigs of storage, plus an expandable micro SD slot. It's going to come with Android 4.0, 8 megapixel rear camera, 1.9 megapixel front. It's going to have Gorilla Glass 2 on it. It's going to come with a 2100 milliamp hour battery. That's pretty cool. Uh, so, you know, those are, those are the hardware specs, but uh, there's really two... There's actually there's there's two parts to this discussion that I want to have tonight. I, I want to have a developer discussion, and then I want to have kind of a marketing discussion about this, and and personally why I think that this is going to be the game changer. Uh, so, anyways, every all the carriers announced that they're going to be carrying it in the United States. Uh, five of them, including uh, U.S. Cellular, which I didn't know they were a major carrier, but apparently they are. Uh, Sixteen gigabyte model will set you uh, set you back two hundred bucks subsidized. 32 gig model is going to cost you 250. Uh, if you're going to pay full price for your S3, 
Drop uh, the six hundred bucks for the t uh, for the sixteen gig, six fifty for the thirty two gig. However, AT and T came out and said that they're going to be offering it for fifty bucks less than everybody else. Oh, I don't know, don't know really what's up with uh, AT and T. Uh, AT and T is also saying they'll be offering an exclusive red colored uh, S three, as well as a bundle offer that will get you a sixteen gig micro SD card for an additional forty bucks. Uh, Sprint's version of the Galaxy S three will come preloaded with Google Wallet. So uh, this time around. Instead of changing, uh, you know, different hardware uh, to suit each carrier and making them happy, they've they've kind of done some software stuff or you know the color for AT and T, whatever. But uh, the important thing is, is they're all going to be you know, relatively the same. Well, they're all going to be the same shape, size, weight, blah blah blah. It's going to essentially be the same hardware, same case. So uh, I want to talk about this from a developer's perspective. So I got two two really you guys are great developers, both of you, and I, I don't mean to kiss your butt, but. Uh, you guys are you guys are doing ROMs. You guys have been cooking ROMs for a while, and I really want to talk to you guys about this phone and how appealing it is uh, to a developer. So let's, uh, Adam. I want to start with you. Uh, first off, maybe maybe the the blunt question is: Team Gummy <coughs> planning on supporting the S3 at all? Well, right now, currently, um, I mean, we we've been actually Justin came up with the idea. K KJR he came up and said, "Hey, would you be interested in this?" And I said. You know what? If if you can prove it, then let's go for it. So, he decided that we're going to throw together a fundraiser um, to actually, you know, make some T-shirts and everything. Just be like, hey, go ahead, we'll do this. I'm excited. I had a Galaxy uh, just as the first model. I didn't even have a Galaxy S2 because obviously Verizon decided that they didn't want to play a part of it. So. <laughs> I'm pretty excited about it. Um, I learned off of Samsung's code, even if it was reversed. So even if Gummy decides to make something that's entirely Somali, entirely touch was based, or if we try and port something over to AOSP, either way, something's going to happen. Right. Uh, Ken, is this, is this something that you think the developers are going to drool over? Is this going to be, uh, you know, could it be as popular as, I, I won't compare it to a Nexus device, but maybe like the Sensation or... Mm -hmm or the note or something that gets hacked all apart? Well, um, I mean, for OEM-based ROMs, yeah, it's going to be huge. Uh, this is a, a huge release. Um, I mean, this is a top-of-line device, hands down. Uh, but as far as AOSB goes, I mean, if you look at the only other Samsung non-Nexus device um, that had LT on it, the, the Droid Charge, uh, it still doesn't have AOSB on it to this day. Um, so I think developers are going to be a little uh, apprehensive um, trying to okay. jump straight into the game with this. Uh, that's a fair assessment. Uh, uh, Adam, tell me, uh, the, uh, is this, you know, with the, with the Galaxy Nexus just being released uh, a couple months ago, you know, and, and it's, you know, it's a powerhouse device. I mean, everybody loves it. I mean, I love mine, and anybody that's ever used one really kind of just sings how great it is. Uh, is this going to be, uh, will the S3 be a viable development platform? Is uh, and I guess what I mean by that is, um, you know, the, the Galaxy Nexus is is just, you know, everywhere as far as development goes. Is, does the S3 have the opportunity to have just as big of a uh, development uh, community around it as the Nexus and some of the other more popular phones? Unfortunately, I'm, I'm going to say a yes and a no on that. And, and the reason for that is, is because... The Nexus is unstoppable in, in a development standpoint, and that's because there's three different models. Um, but we can take the same code from every single model, and we can throw it out, depending on the proprietary files, depending on what it is, to every single one of them without you know, changing the actual code. Uh, and Ken brings up a good point, saying that the charge still doesn't have AOSP on it, and it's been out for you know, over a year now. So right. who's to say that the S3 is going to get this somewhat sooner? I think the fact that there's going to be five different major carriers, and they're all going to have exactly the same hardware may help out with that. Um, but in order you know, for these people to make everything, the reason why it's so popular now is the same reason that like the Nexus S and, and every other Nexus device before that was because you could make a uniform code to go towards any phone and, and you can change anything minor here and there to add in for this phone, for that phone specifically, but not until it's added into AOSP. So you're going to find yourself a ton of different ROMs, but it's going to be phone specific and it's not going to be something similar unless you have multiple people. You know, you like you look at you look at Gummy, and it's just like majority of that is going to be like KJR, and it's going to be me. 
and we both have Verizon, but you look over at like AOKP and a lot of them have T-Mobile. I'm sure someone's got to have Verizon. Like, you may find an AOKP for that, but I mean, that's a ton of work to port it off of just a proprietary system, operating system, and then modifying that with all of your, you know, reconfigured Java code that you pull. So I think it's going to be huge, but uh, until it actually hits AOSP, I don't think it's going to be as big as everyone hopes. Okay. Uh, uh, Ken, tell me, uh, uh, you, you've done you, you've done a lot of app development, and uh, as far as as far as app development goes, is there anything about the S3 specifically that uh, that that kind of you know is attractive to you versus other devices when you're developing for the device? <coughs> um, well, it's kind of nice to to be able to test apps across um, multiple overlays. Uh, I have an HTC device um, or multiple HTC devices that I also try to test my apps on um, because Sense will, you know, sometimes do some weird stuff with it or whatever. So uh, I try to like, you know, get as many options to test it on um, to make sure that it'll work across everything. So the fact that it's TouchWiz uh, may give a little bit, um, you know, may make it a little bit more uh, attractive. Uh, but uh, back to the, the LT thing real quick. I mentioned something in the chat. Um, there's a if you guys have heard of Code Aurora Forms, um, it's basically the reason that we had LTE on the Thunderbolt. Uh, it's a form dedicated to getting open source um, Android onto Qualcomm chips. Uh, and because the all of I can't remember which carriers are getting the S4 version of the uh, the S3, but because that's a Qualcomm chip, uh, a lot of that code is going to be on Code Aurora forms. And I think that those ones actually have a much better chance of getting AOSP um, than the other ones. The reason uh, that the charge didn't get is because it was the same Sun chip, the Exynos, whatever. Um, and it was, you know, th there's not really a whole lot of open source uh, material on that. But uh, yeah, I mean, it, because it's <coughs> a Qualcomm chip, sorry. Because mm -hmm. it's a Qualcomm chip, I think there's actually a bit more. Uh, Possibility of it getting working AOSB. It, it, I mean, it's the same chip that's in the uh, the One X. So if they get LTE on the One X, you're almost definitely going to get LTE on uh, on the S3. So that's sure. just my my two cents on that. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, that, you brought some really good points. Uh, someone, one of you guys has a lot of background noise. I'm not sure who it is, but uh, maybe you can just kind of take a look at your environment and, and get things a little quieter um i'm muted right now i just unmuted it to talk right. so that's ken ken's having and headphones on so it's always ken know. ken ken i swear i'm gonna buy <laughs> I, i'm gonna buy you a real webcam and a real headset and a real microphone and <laughs> um, <laughs> we have all it's just none of it's available to me right now that the nice webcam is uh uh, one of my other roommates is using that right now. Sorry, Ken, you can't use that new shit, right? Can't use it. It's too cool. <laughs> I'm not allowed. They, they don't let him play with toys. Uh, so, you know, the, I don't know. The, the, the S3 from a development standpoint, you know, I'm, I'm really hoping that I, I, I had the opportunity here to, uh, to play with a uh, T-Mobile one not too long ago. And it was it, it felt really nice in my hand. I, I, I got to say... I, the, the software I didn't I didn't really play too much with the software because it was <clears throat> because it was a development version and uh, not everything was quite right on it but the hardware itself man uh, was really pretty uh, beautiful screen uh, I, I really can't wait to you know actually drive one for a week or so and see uh, see how it you know see how it rolls um, I also wanted to touch on this uh, about the whole about Samsung releasing this device on the five carriers and everything kind of from a marketing perspective and why I think that this could be you know, it's for for you know to, to to be cliche. You know, one phone to rule them all or whatever. But um, so let's just run down some stuff. Um, it's hitting five U.S. carriers all within a matter of weeks. Uh, we're not going to have one carrier that has it for three or four months before everybody else does. Uh, it's 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 hitting all the carriers within just a matter of weeks. Um, there's no different variance from carrier to carrier. Uh, the price point is the same on all of them, or or very very similar. And then uh, on top of it, uh, there's uh, this TouchWiz uh, has got some new features in it, like S Voice and all that kind of stuff that I personally I don't find too attractive. But what Samsung has done here, and, it, and I think is 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 pretty brilliant, uh, that that Apple has done extremely well over the last however many years they've been doing this, uh, 
you know, they, they've finally got enough cloud where they can set the rules. And I think that's kind of what happened here. I, I think Samsung uh, set the rules with a carrier. You know, they've, they've got the, the S series has consistently, you know, moved product, man. They, they're, they sell these phones like, like hotcakes. And uh, I, I think that Samsung finally got, got it right in that uh, they're, they're, they're following Apple's model. Okay, they're releasing a very similar device across all of the carriers. Uh, there's there's a standard now with them, and also more importantly, this device is really geared towards the consumer. It's not geared towards uh, people like Adam or Ken or or uh, you know really developers at all. I mean, they they just released the Nexus for that, but really this is the soccer mom phone, and this is the device that everybody that normally you know wouldn't be buying smartphones is going to buy. It's got a lot of really nifty features inside of it that's, uh, that uh, the salespeople can demo very easily to people. Uh, the whole S voice control is pretty cool. I, it just, I, I really think that what, what Samsung has done here with this device, with this huge worldwide launch uh, and, and keeping one form factor is, is pretty brilliant. Uh, and part of this one form factor, I keep going back to having the hardware being the same because I, I think that yeah, I think it's just retarded. It's dumb for, for an OEM to come out and release four or five drastically different versions of the same damn phone. Uh, you know, you walk into any Target or, or Kmart or whatever, uh, and you see a huge wall of iPhone accessories. Because all those accessories work on everybody's iPhone, because all the iPhones are the same. So I'm kind of imagining <coughs> that the same thing is going to happen with the S3. Maybe not on such a grand scale, but... You know, this really opens the door for people who are looking for accessories for their device, car docks, headphones, whatever. And I bet Samsung's going to let everybody brand uh, brand all their stuff, you know, uh, Galaxy certified or whatnot, kind of like how how, uh, how Apple does with the uh, with the iOS. Uh, I don't know, you guys you got two cents to add on this? I mean... Well, I think you know, you've hit some the, uh, giant the points S on that. Oh, oh, one, one at the time. thing that, that took, one, one at a time, that took one Android time. to a huge new market, and no one can deny it, was the Galaxy S, even though it had, from this carrier to that carrier, it had entirely the entirely different specs and a lot of things. You know, I'm stuck with Verizon. I had less RAM on it than every other one of them. I was pissed off about it, but the phone still ran great. Like, my girlfriend still uses her old T-Mobile Galaxy S. She asked me, I have an upgrade. What to get? The first thing I point to is get this phone. I mean, it's going to be intuitive. It's going to be the way that people need it to be. And, and I think it's, it's great that you brought along the points that, hey, you know, we're going to bring together this the, the, the way that Apple has brought together all of their phones on every carrier because, to me, I, I hope to God it looks exactly the same as the international one mm -hmm. and they just have the different colors and all that on there and so on. I, I don't know why AT&T gets red. To me, that should be Verizon, but that's neither here nor there. Yeah. But the fact if they can pull that off, you know, we're already killing iPhone in the Android market. This is just going to bring it up even more just mainstream to make it such more of a big player to hopefully just give the Android market what it needs, that extra boost, just to pull sure. us ahead. Sure. Ken? Yeah, uh, I mean, I'm personally going to miss the, uh, what was it, the Galaxy S Skyrocket 4G Exhibit Moon Phone. Like, I'm going to miss those crazy, crazy names. Uh, you know, five versions of the same phone on the same carrier. Like, sure. That's... I mean, I, I really think it's a great idea. And like, like Adam said, I don't understand why AT and T gets the red version. Like, know, red is my favorite that. color. Why can't if I want the red version? But I'm on Verizon. Like, I, I, I we need to do something about that. We need to get Verizon on the red version. Yeah, you know, I, I, I didn't. Get, I, I don't get the whole idea behind a red uh, a red version for just one. You know, for for just one one device one carrier. I mean. They're going to do white and blue for for everybody. Why suddenly say, "Oh, well, we'll make AT and T a red one"? I mean, what's the point there? Is that AT and T just wanted to feel special after they lost the contract with iPhone? Uh, may, maybe. But why red? You know, but you, you why actually, red on AT T? Yeah, that's that. But but see, actually, Adam brings up a good point, uh, and and I think there might be some validity to this. Is that AT and T is going to get the special red edition because iPhone? Is, I, I I'm about ninety percent positive that uh, that AT and T is still the uh, ha is the carrier with the most iOS devices on it. Uh, out, even Verizon, Verizon doesn't have as many iOS, and Sprint doesn't have as many iOS. I think that this might be a, a, a kind of a marketing tactic uh, by Samsung to give 
you know, yet another kind of option for an AT&T customer instead of buying another iPhone to go with this. And it's just, you know, you, know, you want a red one here. You know, you want a blue one here. You want a white one there, whatever. Uh, I'm, I'm actually quite surprised they're not going to make a black one. You know, that's... They can't, not. actually. Uh, there was an article on, what was it, uh, Droid Life, maybe, um, about how uh, the, the S3 is a phone for, uh, for lawyer for lawyers. Oh, yeah. Designed by lawyers. Yeah, I read that um, too. Read that article. You should go read it. It was a really interesting read. I, I, um, the S3 isn't actually even a rectangle right. because of Apple's patent on it. It has the the sides come in together. Uh, they're slanted towards the bottom. Um, it's not even a rectangle just because they don't want to get any any possibility of a lawsuit on this phone. Right. So you're trying to tell me, Ken, that they're not only racist towards color, but they're racial towards shapes as well. Absolutely. <laughs> can't be racial towards shapes, man. Race has to do with color. Gosh, man. I, I think it was like a. And I'm racist towards tall people. <laughs> well, you can't be. You're small. Well, you what, know, it's what, like when you're black, you can use certain words. <laughs> if you're small, you can say small and short and midget. It's fine. What's yeah, Pip's week? <laughs> uh, I, I I know the article you're talking about, Ken, and I actually I think it came from The Verge, but it was carried by a bunch of other. Uh, a bunch of other websites too, where yeah, there's, uh, this was the device that was designed by lawyers because they're they're everything about it. You're 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 spot on. Everything about it uh, avoids having uh, some kind of it, it avoids like every Apple patent there is. And you're right, the shape of yeah. it is actually kind of a a teardrop shape instead of a yeah. rectangle, yeah. and it's kind of a teardrop shape. And uh, yeah. And that's why it's not, they're not offering a black version. It's because they have, Apple has a patent on a, a mostly black screen with a screen, so uh, with the, uh, the actual screen in the middle. Um, so, yeah, I mean, they, that's, that's one of the reasons. Black, I would prefer, I would much prefer a black um, S3. And, uh, I mean, that's never going to happen because. Right. Um, <laughs> Maybe they Apple can make like a, I, I, even rather than a, uh, a black one, heck, man, I'd I'd be all over like a gunmetal gray or, you know, something something along those lines. Um, yeah, they got really weird colors for it. That pebble blue, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Yeah. And I'm not a fan of white phones. Yeah, I I, I, I don't know. I, I that that pebble blue just kind of. I mean, it was all right. It was different. You know, I, I get that, but uh, I'm you know I'm kind of an I like industrial looking you know devices like my Nexus. It's yeah very industrial looking and very masculine, like it's going to jump off my desk and kick my butt. So, uh, I want to open Rambo up the, wouldn't use it, I'm not interested. Right. I want to open up the phone lines if you want to join this discussion. Uh, we're at area code 347-838-9645. 347-838-9645 is, uh, is our phone number. Andy is just now getting logged into BTR, and he will be screening our calls tonight. Uh, so give me a call if you want to jump in on this conversation. Uh, about the Galaxy S3. It's 347-838-9645. Andy will screen you and we'll get you on the air. Uh, so yeah, you know, the S3, I, I, it's one of those things that I, I, I really hope that this, I, I really hope that I see one in every person's hand. Uh, really. I, I mean, that's <laughs> it, it has the opportunity to just to, to make a killing and to really advance Android by just flat out moving numbers. Uh, and of course, I hope that it's easily you know, unlockable and rootable, and we get AOSP on there as soon as possible. So, well, you know, we're not dealing with Motorola. Let's say that again, Adam. We're not dealing with Motorola. I mean, at the bare minimum, at least we're going to make some kernels, and hopefully, because of the fact that you know we have five different carriers. I mean, six if you want to can include the actual international version. Right. They should all be running somewhat off of the same kernel, so at least kernel devs can have all at it until we get AOSP running on it. Be nice. I mean, I'm, I, I, I just that, I, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of, of just you know, of AOSP ROMs. They're just, I, I like that vanilla flavor to it. And uh, have you, know, you tried the S3? I, <laughs> I can't talk too much about it, but um, I, I've held it. I've flipped through it. I've played with it. I, I actually, I played with it for about maybe ten minutes, uh, and then I gave it I back. I was actually impressed. Like it's really impressed quick. with it. I haven't tried it yet, but I've seen videos. And uh, Jeff um, actually got one in at work today, and he was talking about it. I'm actually going into work um, with Jeff tomorrow, uh, so I'm going to see if I can uh, if I can play with the S3 for a little bit before I go to my interview. There you go. Uh, it's it, it's a cool device. You know, uh, I, I liked the hardware, and I think that with an AOSP ROM, I think that it'll uh, 
I, I don't think that it will replace my Nexus. Uh, but for you know, again, this this device isn't for developers. This this device isn't yeah. for people like me or you guys. This device is for the soccer moms. Uh, this uh, this device is for this is a mass market. Device. Yeah, absolutely, and that's really what we need. That's what Android needs right now is a good swift kick in the ass uh, of a mass marketed device. You know, the the Galaxy S did great, even though you know it was just all crap. And uh, as far as the different carriers go, um, all right, uh, Andy, I just got your message. Uh, we're talking right now about the S3. If you're calling in to talk about anything else, uh, we're not going to put you on air. So we're talking about S3. Uh, we'll take some calls later on, and we'll just do general topics. But right now, we're talking about the S3. So uh, let's um, – dead horse. I think we've beat it. <laughs> Can uh, I ask what your guys' favorite feature, uh, like software-wise, of the S3 is? Because I, I already know what mine was. I saw this – I saw this uh, – what it was, the, uh, the pop-up player, they called it, on, uh, on the video, and I was blown away. I think that's an awesome idea. Like, that, that is – Something we've been waiting for forever. Have you guys it's seen it's fantastic from a developer standpoint, from from you and me. But I, I mean, come on, like, I like it's really cool on the fact that they can do it. But really, do you want to sell this as a prize feature? Congratulations, we have a widget on top of a widget on top of a widget dog. I mean, well, it, that it's wasn't okay. One of the top features. That's just one of the things that I saw. I I, th I thought it was pretty cool. Um, I uh, yeah yeah you know I, th there was. I, I, I'm not quite sure where they're going with a lot of the, the software features that are bundled in there, like the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, like, uh, you know, they're going to be launching their their music service and all this other crap that goes along with it. Um, I, gosh, I, they did a demo, uh, if I remember right, when we watched the, we watched the product announcement uh, last month, they did a demo with the phone. But they were they were using it to control something else. I don't know if it was DLNA or, or, or what it was, but that that was that was kind of a cool feature. The the floating video widget over everything, you know, screen real estate's kind of a premium, you know, and pretty much everything that I do on my phone I use in full screen. I I can't imagine trying to, you know, move windows around and stuff on top of them. But so, all right, let's uh, we got a call. Yeah, we have a call. Do 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 do. Shane, you're on the air, man. What's up? Yeah, I was calling. I wanted to know about um, some of the specs on the S3. I mean, what what can we expect? I'm on Sprint, and I saw that they uh, they were picking that phone up, and I just kind of wanted to know uh, what kind of specs I can expect. Okay, like hardware specs. Uh, uh, Ken, you want to yeah. run? Ken, you want to run down those? They're in the document. Yeah, so uh, it, it's the 4.8 inch HD Super AMOLED. Um, you'll you on Sprint will be getting the uh, 1.5 dual core uh, Snapdragon S4. Um, as far as I know, all the versions are all coming with two gigs of RAM, which is fantastic in my opinion. Yeah. Um, 16 or 32 gig uh, storage and a micro SD card, which is really nice. Mm -hmm. um, eight megapixels in the back, 1.9 in the front, Gorilla Glass 2, which is supposed to be. I don't know. I, I'm more waiting for the Willow Glass um, than the uh, Gorilla Glass, um, and it should have LTE on Sprint. Um, oh, and there's a 2100 milliamp battery, so uh, pretty decent specs overall. I mean, I don't know, I, I don't know the dimensions or the weight offhand, um, but it's Samsung, so I would imagine that it's going to be really slim and uh, incredibly light. So, how about that? How about that 2100 milliamp hour battery? I mean, that's it's not really impressive, really. I mean, when you think about it's it, not that well, impressive. maybe on the dual core it might be nice, but right. on the quad core, I was expecting at least twenty six. I mean, it's a quad core device. You're gonna need a lot of battery to power that. Do the uh, does any do any of you guys know if the international version comes with twenty one hundred? The quad core international yeah. version. No, I, I would assume it comes with the exact same thing. The only thing they're changing is the actual processor on side of it, okay. just because they want to be able to run with whatever band they're going to run out here. Sure. Um, I mean, going to what what Ken's saying, saying it's not that impressive. I mean, my Nexus has a 2200 in it already, and that thing drains battery, yeah. and it's still only a quad core as well, and it's not an S4. Um, I don't know the speed difference in there, other than the fact this is 1.2, and that's the S4 is going to be clocked at 1.5. But to me, it's just you know, whoever's going to drain battery more is the only thing I'll give Motorola and the advantage of is that they made the max. They put that <laughs> 3,300, 3,500, whatever milliamp in it. 
I, I really wish that they would have done that in, in the Galaxy S3 to really make it, um, you know, the phone of the next generation. I, I'm with you. Ken, what were you saying? Uh, do you guys know if it, it, it comes with a removable battery, doesn't it? It's yes. not a, a fixed battery? Right. I, I, that's, I, that's what I believe. I'm, I'm pretty sure I read that somewhere. Okay. I'm really glad about that. Like, I, you know, we started seeing the move towards uh, no SD cards and oh, yeah. uh, unremovable batteries, and that was worrying me. Like, that's, that's not at all impressive to me. I don't want to see that at all. Oh, that's, that's what HTC did with the One Series. I mean, that's, uh, yeah, yeah, that, that's actually... Not. Uh, that's actually a great tie-in to our next segment. Um, <clears throat> before we go into our next segment, though, uh, I, I think I think we pretty much hit this. We're good on this. Uh, before we go into our next segment, I want to go ahead and give a commercial break to Swappa.com. Swappa is our sponsor for tonight, our advertiser. Check them out. If you haven't, uh, just go look. Even if you're not in the market to buy or sell the Android device, head over to Swappa.com. That's S-W-A-P-P-A.com and have a look around. Uh, it's an amazingly clean site. It's very, very simple uh, to buy devices you know if you're like me you've got usually have a couple you know old devices lying around that you don't use anymore but they're still in great shape so you know why not get some money maybe sell a couple of them and have enough money to go buy an s3 uh swappa.com it's the very best way to buy and sell gently used android devices i've i've moved three pieces on there so far and uh, it was really easy real cheap and even buying them uh swappa puts a lot of safeguards in effect there so that you know the the purchaser doesn't get hosed uh, so that's, anyways, that's Swappa.com. They're our sponsor tonight. Please take a minute and go check out their website. Uh, our next topic that I want to talk about is, uh, there was a two-part two article that was written over on RootsWiki, uh, and it was Collision Course. And what they're talking about, uh, let's see, I believe it was, uh, da, 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 I'll tell you who the author was. The author uh, was Jeff McIntyre, and he wrote part one last month and just wrote part two. And essentially what he's talking about in these, in these, in these two articles is, is how this move from uh, things like internal storage and things like having all of your media and everything on your device, uh, putting it up in the cloud, okay? And then the side effect of that is the carriers... Uh, Charging more for uh, charging more money for data, giving less than stellar service for that, and then also uh, throttling us and all these other things. So, so what we're having is we're having a trend of everything moving to the cloud. Uh, the carriers like it, the OEMs like it, uh, moving everything into our cloud service. Uh, Google loves it. I mean, come on, we got Play Music, Play Store, Google Drive. You know, everything is supposed to be in the cloud. Yeah, it just and it's it's convenient, uh, you know. I, I personally I work from three different computers, and you know, I, at any time I've got two or three Android devices lying around, and it's nice to be able to just pick up whatever I want and have all of my documents there, all of my music there, and have everything. So, uh, and I pretty much made the entire switch. I haven't opened Microsoft Office in in ages, unless someone sends me, you know, a, something in an email. But really, the the important part about this discussion needs to be. Uh, how the carriers are screwing us over. Uh, it used to be back in the day, and I think I mentioned this not too long ago, uh, it used to be back in the day that the cash cow for carriers was text messaging. And you'd get, you know, a thousand text messages a month for, for 20 bucks or something like that. And uh, the truth is, is that it costs a carrier a fraction of a penny, a fraction of a cent to send an SMS from here to there. For me, it costs them nothing. Yeah, it's it, it's it so. It piggybacks minuscule. on the original si signal. Yeah, exactly. Literally costs them nothing money wise. So so they were making money hand over fist and overage charges. I, I mean, just stupid. If you went over, if you had a five hundred you know block of texts and you went over every single one over your five hundred was like forty or fifty cents. I mean, they were making a killing with this stuff. Well, it's now the norm for. Uh, for you know, unlimited texting, unlimited messaging across all the carriers. I mean, if you if you've got a, if you have cell phone service with a smartphone and you don't have an unlimited text plan, then you know, get out of 1989 or 1992 or whatever. Get out of that because uh, th that's the standard. So, uh, what the carriers are doing now is they were looking for the new cash cow, and the new cash cow is by far data. Uh, you know, it, it's when you when you look at the cost of, of data on a wireless carrier level versus the cost of data on another ISP level, it's a resoundingly ridiculous number. 
uh, they're charging. Let me see if I can't find the find the notes. Uh, there was uh, there was some numbers that were dropped. That uh, let me find them. I'm sorry for not being prepared. So we have here we go. Uh, Jeff wrote this in, in his in the article. Uh, in the place of unlimited data plans, the two carriers have introduced far more expensive tiered data plans with extremely restrictive caps and prohibitive overage charges. AT&T's most expensive plan, this is AT&T's most expensive plan, is 50 bucks a month, which limits you to 5 gigs of data, with overage charges of $10 per gig. Verizon also offers a $50 5 gig plan. And then it also offers an $80 10 gig plan that gives you a slightly better rate per gigabyte. However, Verizon also charges $10 for every gig that you go over on your data cap. Okay, so five. So so essentially, what it's coming down to is it's 10 bucks per gig of data wireless. And maybe someone can call in and educate me uh, on exactly why I get I, I get terabytes of transfer a month from Comcast for $60 at just breakneck speeds but there's no logical reason for it it's all monetary this is this just such a it's load of shit it's because they can all of the carriers are doing it so there's no reason for any one carrier to change it up and make it cheap Verizon in their statement that they made to entirely just destroy their own grandfathering of um, unlimited. I just admitted to it right there. They're like, we realize the amount of money and the amount of people that are going to realize how great 4G is. You don't even need Comcast anymore. So guess what? We're going to cash in on it now. That's all it comes down to. And they realize that. And they can get away with it because they can and for no other reason. You look at the uh, the differences in between, you know, the 700 megahertz spectrum. You you look at anything governments put out, anything that Google's put out to make it try and standardize. They entirely took advantage of the scenario because they are not breaking any laws or any regulations or any rules doing it, and they're going to cash in until someone makes something different. Right, I'm with you, Ken. And the only reason somebody's going to make something different is because they have to. Uh, the government's going to step in and say, I mean, it's going to have to be something like that. No carrier is just going to be like, oh, you know what? We've been screwing our customers. Why don't we make it easier for them? I mean, that's not going to happen. Right. Well, you know, it's uh, I've I've been a huge proponent uh, of this idea for a long time, and and uh, Russell Hawley over at Geek.com, he's he's constantly bringing it up. Anytime this comes up. You know he's got to bring me into the uh, into the conversation as well, uh, and that's the whole idea of Google purchasing a carrier. Uh, what needs to happen is is exactly what Google is doing over in Kansas City. Okay, uh, as it is, our our landline ISPs. You know your Comcast, your Time Warner, your uh, your CenturyLink, your you know your Sprint, all those guys. Okay, uh, they they they're just like the wireless guys in in, in effect that they've got this they've got this stuff locked down tight. Okay, there's you know when you live in a city you t typically only have you know one or two carrier choices due to uh, franchise agreements but so Google came along so well this is this is we're gonna set the standard this is how it's gonna be done and they're you know doing 100 meg fiber to the home for free you know in, in Kansas City so uh, they're not there yet it's not done but I think what what they're doing is is noble and you know it's really kind of setting a standard for ISPs so what I think needs to happen is something extremely similar in the wireless realm. We need somebody like Google to come along and set the new standard. And I guarantee that, it, you know, that, that if, and I'll just use Google as an example because, you know, it's what I dream about at night. Uh, if Google were to come in and pick up T-Mobile, for example, and instead of making, uh, instead of making 60% profits, you know that they're instead of getting you know 60% margin on uh, on all their on all their products, you know they cut it down to like 30% and offer a cheaper, better service. I mean, the, the people are going to flock from Verizon, AT&T, and Sprint to get on board that. I, I, would, am I am I right? Is this, is this? No, you're absolutely right in that, Scotty. I mean, it, it's either going to be the masses of people that get to that, or it's going to be that the government has to step in and go. Oh my God! This is entirely monopolizing 
every single part of the spectrum in the 700 megahertz this is entirely monopolizing the market and taking a total advantage of people which they can't do on the main majority of that so either someone steps in that isn't in the game that makes it their game to make it a standard or the government eventually steps in and just goes do you know how much money you're ripping people off which which i don't see because they're just getting paid on the back end of that anyway uh, that's totally true do you Ken? Do you think that Google would be allowed to buy a carrier at this point? You know, I mean, they already own a phone manufacturer. They already own, you know, this and that. I mean, do you think that they would? No, I don't think they be will. Allowed to? Yeah, you know, it's it's funny because that's 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 Russell's Russell's usual Russell's arg usually Russell's argument when we talk about this, and and I honestly don't see it as being a problem. And I mean, of course, you know, Apple would just shit any trust suits you know for I mean they would flip seriously um, I, I think I, I think that the way what Google's doing right now is is you know people say oh well they can't have they can't own the carrier can't own the hardware can't own the OS and blah 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 and well okay as far as like Motorola goes you know it, 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 I can see them being a problem if you could only use Motorola phones on their network but they would never do that um, I, and as far as Android goes, Android's an open source platform. Anybody and their brother can use it. So, well, when Google put money into the 700 megahertz spectrum, you know, they gave rules out on what they were going to allow. It says it's open device, open platform, open applications that they can't put that on there. So they've already bought into the LTE spectrum, so they totally have the idea to do it. But the thing is that the government will not allow this, and that is just due That's to the I'm laws and regulations of monopolization. I would love, and I would drop Verizon like it was nothing, to go over there and just get a pure data plan and get everything routed through the internet and I'd be paying probably 60 bucks a month and 90 for like three lines sure. and I would be the happiest person ever because I guarantee that's what Google would throw at us but, see wait, wait, I, I, I totally agree with you they, they would they, they would go straight to a to an LTE VoIP system in a heartbeat because they make sense but what, what I what my point is is and you know you, you brought up a good point okay so the government would you know throw all this crap out of it and wouldn't have it you know, I, I'm not going to agree with that because, you know, the truth of the matter is, is we live in a capitalist society, and typically whoever has the most money wins. I mean, that's 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 just the fact. You know, whoever can buy the most damn politicians, you know, uh, is you know they're the ones who are going to. Those are the guys who are going to, uh, who who are who are, who are going to win. Yeah, uh, Andy's hitting me up. Andy is a is a block C expert. Uh, uh, he he has some really good info. Andy, you're on the air, buddy. What's up? Awesome. Hey. Uh, yeah, the Block C, I mean, basically, which is Verizon's 4G LTE service, uh, runs over the 400 megahertz spectrum. Um, there, when they won the auction, there was open access provisions put in there. So if somebody, anybody, Google, could come up with a way to realistically do voice over LTE and get those devices certified on Verizon's networks, which there are already data devices uh, that have been certified, um, that's actually a very real possibility. Um, they've got the credentialing process. Uh, Motorola already has devices on the Verizon network. Um, it's not something that seems unfathomable. I mean, the laws are in there. The laws exist. The provisions are in there. The provisions exist. Um, it's just it has to be over LTE. CDMA is the voice technology currently that's used, and obviously that's not data. So right. it's got to be voice over LTE. But uh, it, it can happen. Uh, that's already there. So I, I disagree with uh, Adam's but, statement. But Verizon is not going to go there, uh, you know, willingly, <laughs> because they're they're it's it's well I don't know maybe if, if they if their data was cheaper on doing a a, a VOLTE if they could somehow you know make their make it better margins for them rather than using the CDMA network now I can see it happening. But that'd be the only reason why. Well, the, the way it would probably work is, just, just like the data devices, I mean, there's really no difference between uh, you firing up a browser using one of these third-party approved hotspots and browsing the web versus making a voice over LTE phone call. It, right. It's using the same technology. Um, it's, a, it's the same bandwidth, same spectrum. It's all data. Um, they haven't, exactly, it's all data. They haven't made the process easy. You still have to be approved. The regulations don't put a cap on 
what they can charge the companies to come in and, and have approved devices, but they do have to have um, a structure in place so that devices can be approved. Right. Uh, so it's not really a matter of of technology being there. The technology is there. It's just a matter of somebody kicking the door down. Right. But it, who's going to be the person to kick the door in? Well, Wireless Republic is an interesting one. Um, you know, they started doing the back end over Sprint. Uh, now, I don't know that that was all over data, um, but that's that's kind of a, a similar business plan that I can see where you piggyback over, you know, Google will pay Verizon some sort of monthly stipend to use their data connections, and, you know, it, it's all data at that point, whether you're making a phone call or surfing the Internet. So. Right. Uh, good points, man. Uh, Adam, Ken, you got you want to add add to that? I mean, I think no. He, I mean, uh, he hit everything. I mean, I still wonder. Like, I I I don't personally know the antitrust laws well enough to say uh, whether or not you know it would be allowed. But I mean, China alone already threw a bitch fit about uh, Google buying up Motorola. Uh, so I, I mean, I think having a hardware manufacturer a carrier and everything else that Google owns mm -hmm. um, might uh, might end up being a problem if they end up trying to do it. But uh, I mean, uh, hopefully we'll see. I mean, hopefully somebody will try to, uh, we'll push it and see. Hopefully Google will be like, hey, T-Mobile, how much do you want? And, uh, you know, see what goes on from there. I, I, I think it's going to happen. It's also, just to throw one more little caveat in there, uh, you know, I think it was a week or two ago. Uh, Verizon, there was something hidden on a website that basically said they're going to allow any 4G device to be activated on their network. And, and I personally believe that that is part of those um, Block C, LTE, open access provision type laws. So you're going to start to see these things I've become bigger and bigger. Well, it's not only just, just, just that. And I really, I really, really hope that we see things like that where they're just allowing multiple devices on there because those are some of the terms that they agreed upon in the Block C. However, um, I think what we're going to see is, and you know, there's a few articles on, on Roots Wiki about it, about the fact that they're, they're going to have, and they've already had people that have submitted to have unlimited amount of data on just their apps thrown in there. Yeah. And you know, if I want to pay 30 bucks a month to get my two gigs, and it's just like directly off of what I download off of the internet, what I go to and visit on websites, I think I can maybe live with that. Um, it sucks to say, but I think that's the, the way that it's going to go at least for the next few years um, is that we're going to have to try and plan out what apps we use instead of how much we're actually going to be using. That's a good point. You bring up a good point. You know, I, 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 I just, it's something that I think that it, it really would fit well. I mean, if, if, if it could get past, uh, if it could get past uh, Congress, it, stupid cat, if it could get past con uh, Congress, I think that you know, it, yeah, this is Tom, everybody. He sits in my lap all day long and annoys the crap out of me while I try to work. Uh, but really, if you look at Google's business plan right now, um, you know, the idea, I think that they are going to sell more unlocked, unsubsidized devices. I think we're going to see more of that uh, across, across the Play Store. Uh, how difficult would it be to go to the Play Store Pick out your unsubsidized, unlocked device. Uh, pick up a uh, a plan, uh, a, a wireless plan, and be done with it. Andy? Yeah, no, I agree. Oh, okay. like when I heard that uh, when I heard that LT devices were coming with SIMs, like the first thing that I thought of was, hey, this will be like GSM carriers, you know, just pop any SIM that I want yeah. into the device. And, hey, it's working on the network, and we haven't seen that yet. I'm really waiting for that. That's that's really something that I want to see. Because, I mean, Verizon has some cool phones, but they're very heavy into the Droid line, and that's just about all they get as far as Android goes. Sure. Um, I would love to be able to say, hey, that One X is looking mighty nifty over there, and, you know, just pick it up, slap my SIM in it, and I'm going to go on Verizon. Like, that, Your that's Ken is disgusting that you bring that up because Vodafone owns Verizon, and that's what they're all about in Europe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and you guys have just described the UK yeah. system, <laughs> actually all of Europe. And, and but they're also using the same spectrum, though. It's all GSM over there. Right, but uh, yeah, and that's uh, that's it's moving towards all LTE over here. I mean, the, they're getting to that point. I mean, I don't see why it's taking them so long. Because it costs money. 
you know. And well, not only does it cost money, but also they're making money by keeping you pigeonholed into a particular service. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's really what it comes down to. They don't want you know, a, uh, somebody on somebody walking into the AT and T store and getting a phone subsidized from AT and T and then activating it on Verizon. I mean, that's money that's being shared between two carriers. Well, you, you wouldn't buy it subsidized anything. anyways up from one carrier and then go activate it somewhere else. You'd have to sign a contract for that carrier service. But, you know, at least having the option to be able to buy my device unlocked and, and, and doing exactly like you say, wa uh, going and getting a SIM card for the carrier of my choice, popping it in my phone, and bam, it works. I, mean, I, mean, I think it just... It just you know that that whole idea, that whole business model, uh, will make the carriers way more competitive. Because right now the norm for 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 a, a wireless customer is to go in, figure out how much money they can spend on a subsidized device. You know, oh, I can get this, I can get the iPhone for at AT and T for two hundred bucks. Okay, most people don't see a uh, an actual device costing six or seven hundred bucks because they only think of the subsidized price so you know they're gonna pay the subsidy and bam they're locked into a two-year so if this if suddenly the standard came out that you didn't have to buy or you had the option of not buying your device on subsidy and going with really any carrier you wanted well then the carriers would just be forced to be more competitive so they instead of instead of locking you into a contract based upon what device you wanted or what price point you wanted to hit but instead getting your business by giving you better offers on data, better pricing, and better customer service. I, I think that's kind of where we need to be. And well, it's also disgusting if you want to talk about subsidizing. Okay, so I have come a discount, and I pay like $22 for my unlimited, okay? And the idea behind it is they're going to make some little bit of profit for saving you 400 to $500. So initially, you spend an additional off of your phone that you just spent $200 on on Verizon to get unlimited back in the day. Over the next two years, you're going to spend $720 on top of that. So you're spending $920 on a $700 phone. Yeah, you ridiculous. spent an additional... Two hundred and twenty dollars. Guess what? That's some interest, and I don't feel like pulling out a calculator to figure that out right, right. now. I'm going to go ahead and say at least like fifteen percent interest. Right. Now, for the amount that I use my data, I need the ten gig plan, which is like eighty dollars, not right. including any overages, which I'm going to have every month. However, if you buy a phone for two hundred dollars, that's a seven hundred dollar phone. You spent almost. Two thousand dollars for that eighty dollar a month plan. So you're now buying four phones for the price that you could have just bought one full phone in. So Europe has it right. Just described why the market it. And it's the lucrative for the phone companies and why they won't change the business model. Right. Oh, of course. Yeah. The, 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 the only way that. The only way that the, this business model, this standard in the United States is going to change is if somebody forces them to. And that's why I'm so in love with the idea of Google buying a carrier, doing it right, and making every, and forcing everybody else to change. I mean, I mean that, that's what needs to happen. And, and, I, and I use Google because they've got the money to do it. They've got the engineering, the technological know-how. They can do it. Uh, Please not Facebook. God, no, not Facebook. Man, I'm just waiting. I'm waiting for 5G to come out. Like, I have the 5G page pulled up right now. And what it says on here, I'm reading off the page. Um, where is it? Uh, I have it highlighted. Uh, if 5G appears and reflects these prognosis, uh, the major differences from a user and point between 4 and 5G techniques must, must be something else than increased maximum throughput. So it's not just going to be faster. That, that doesn't have anything to do with 5G. The examples they give are lower battery consumption, which is obviously really needed. Right. Um, but the one that I'm looking at is cheaper or no traffic fees due to low infrastructure deployment costs. That's what I want right there. No traffic yep. fees. Right. Give us 5G and make it free because, well, why the hell not? We don't need it. We don't need to charge you guys. It's not costing us anything. Anyways. Oh, that's I, it's it's always going to charge and cost money. I mean, it's exactly the, like, the biggest point. And one of the best points that's been on this all tonight is Scotty brought up about the fact of text messaging. It costs them this much right here. Ready? Zero. I can look through this right here. Zero dollars to piggyback on their line 
to send text messages. However, when all of text yeah. messages came out, Unlimited was nothing heard of. And then once it was, it was $30. I currently pay $10 on my family plan on Verizon for every line to be unlimited. And even that is still rip off because it's ten dollars. You know, when we talk about the yeah. fact that it's gonna be entirely data, there's VoIP, there's everything, it's all over the internet at this point. So are we going to see that reduce in the way that we saw text messaging? And and, and my answer is no. Like you want to talk five G and they're gonna say they're gonna reduce this and that. Unless a law states it that that's the way it has to be it's not going to happen because the reason 4G and the reason that all of the data tiered plans are going to be as expensive as they are today is because they realize the value and they're going to capitalize on it and that's the American way. Hmm, that's very true. Yeah, no, I agree. I think though really, uh, I mean the reason this whole topic came up is the, uh, the whole uh, toll free data um, and I think really if they're going to do that then I wouldn't mind. Um, I mean, there's only a couple apps that I really use tons of data on. You know, Google Music, uh, Pandora, um, and torrenting. But uh, obviously, they're not going to toll free a torrent app. But uh, I mean, you, you get the point. Like, there's if I took out those three apps, I would be using closer to five gigs of data a month as opposed to the 15, 20 gigs that I that I do now. Well, exactly, um, so and I'd be happy with that as well. Free. However, that's a monopolization yeah. because in order for them, say Google's like, hey, Google Music, all of our Google apps are now, you're a part of Verizon, guess what? Your two gig tier data plan no longer gets charged by any Google apps. Well, guess what? There's Joe Schmo over here. That's a tiny business that can no longer afford to pay this because Verizon, no matter what, they're getting paid because Google's paying them entirely up the ass. So then that way, the consumer will use their application so they can get their marketing and try and make their revenue back. But these little people are just going to sue now because it's a monopolization because of the fact that, hey, guess what? These people are a billion-dollar corporation. I can't afford Verizon's rates. Right. I agree that maybe so they then, should just have a standard so then, on it, or these um, apps and this sue. apps, but it's it's never going to work. But right, no, Kevin. no, look, this is this is where you where you're not thinking the long game. They sue, the government steps in and says, "Hey, instead of making toll-free you know data apps, we need to just fix the original problem. Let's make them make data cheaper." So bam, we got it. No, oh, and God. I swear, I hope to different. God that's the way it is because I don't want to pay two hundred dollars a month on one line because that's how much sure. data I use a month. Well, we're, uh, yeah. you know, you gotta. I, I think that um, I think that what's gonna happen uh, that that you know, if Google doesn't step up or if somebody isn't doesn't step up and, and show these guys how it's done, uh, I, I honestly think that eventually Congress will have to get in, uh, get involved and uh, and and you know start regulating stuff like they did with uh, uh, back in the day with uh, with the telcos and whatnot I mean this it's, it's getting ridiculous uh, be, and I say this specifically because wireless service in most populated areas of the United States is no longer a luxury I mean my ten-year-old daughter has a cell phone uh, you know, it, it's it's one of these things that that it's just it's not really a luxury item anymore. It's an everyday item. I mean, really, oh, it's a necessity. Yeah, you know, I, we don't have a landline in the house. How many people do you guys know? Can you honestly say that you know within your immediate uh, immediate circle of of people around you? Do you know more than five people that don't have a cell phone? No, that's only my family, and my uncles. That, that's phone. it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and not only just a cell phone, but a smartphone, something that relies on data. That's what I'm saying. Like, they will capitalize because the free market economy that we live in will entirely use and abuse everything they can in order to make as much money. And you know what? If I had on, I'd take it off because that's the way that this country was built, and that's the way that they'll continue to make their profits. And the only way that it won't is entire, until one company steps up and destroys them in sales, which could be Google, or the government steps in and goes, hey, 
whoa, wait a minute. And yeah. that's what we have to wait for, unfortunately. So we just get to pay the price until then for being ahead of the wave. I, I agree with you. Um, let's let's go ahead and move on. I think, I think we've pretty much beat this. That's some really good discussion, guys. I appreciate that. Uh, before we get into our, our final segment and then into our wrap, I do need to mention again that Swappa.com. Check them out, S-W-A-P-P-A.com, Swappa.com, the very best way to buy and sell gently, gently used Android devices. Check them out. Um, so, guys, Adam and Ken, uh, you guys working on anything? Adam, uh, let's go to you first. You got anything in the uh, in the oven that you want to talk about? I mean, obviously, you know, you can see by this sexy tan right here that uh, I'm on vacation, <laughs> so I, I'm not working on a damn thing right now. Um, uh, but, you know, last time I was on, I told you that uh, I'm, I'm heading towards tablets. It's what I want to do. Uh -huh. um, I currently have something in the oven right now. It's it's not even usable. I mean, I haven't even tried to compile it yet, but I have a lot of code going towards it. Um, you may have noticed in, in any tablet that, you know, you got on the left-hand side, you have your, your buttons, navigation. On the right-hand side, you got notifications. You got a bunch of other things. I'm trying to fill in in between because the biggest thing that I miss uh, so swapping from a phone to a tablet is the scrolling dock bar. Uh, I'm going to try and actually make... Uh, a scrolling dock bar that goes directly on in, in the actual navigation pen that's going to hide and show up due to inactivity. Um, that's what I'm working on right now. Cool. And it, it's nowhere being done, but that's that's my next wave. I also have to say a, a big shout out to, to Zoom, Zoom Dev. He's actually taking some of my code. He's making it his own, and, and you know, I couldn't couldn't be happier to have have that done and have someone else you know, working on, on Gummy here. He may not be a part of it uh, of, of exactly Team Gummy, but you know he likes to throw out code, and we're not going to be discriminatory and not take it. So, sure. love that guy, and uh, that's about it that I have going on here with development. We do have T-shirts that we're we're trying to sell a little bit. Uh, maybe make enough to just purchase new devices for us. Yeah, those T-shirts, man. Uh, if you head over to the Team Gummy forums and on on Rootswiki. Uh, there's a black one and a white one, and they look. The design is really sick. Uh, it's it's not even just, stupid cat. Uh, it's you know it's not all Android this and that. It's you know it's that really wicked looking star that they have, and you know it's got the logo on the sleeve. Uh, you guys are selling for what 19 bucks? Is that right? Yeah, it's it's about 19 dollars, I believe, and and we're not trying to. Um you know, censor anything on what's going on or hide what's going on. It costs us like eight dollars a T-shirt currently. We had to, we finally got enough free orders. Uh, basically, um, Justin and I are splitting it, and we're making like around maybe three dollars a T-shirt after shipping and everything on there. Um, we're just trying to, to right now just get Galaxy S2s or Galaxy S3s for the both of us, and that's it. If anything goes on farther than that, I mean, we're, this is directly a device fund, and that's what we're going for. Um, you know, we we love to break your devices and fix them, and and we love to keep them going. And you know, we don't ask you to to donate and do this. That that's an option there. This is us actually asking, hey, help us feed our terrible, terrible, expensive habit, and uh, we'll keep making what you enjoy to do, which is just you know, flashing and not trying to break your phone. Very good, uh, Ken. I know you're working on some stuff. You've got some a uh, couple different goodies up your sleeve. You want to talk about them? Yeah, um, the most recent app that I'm working on um, is uh, Ultimate Scheduler. Um, if you guys had heard it, heard of Tweezy earlier, uh, it got revamped. Um, now supports Facebook, um, Twitter, email, and SMS. And I haven't got a chance to look into uh, Google Plus yet, but uh, I am planning on adding Google Plus. Um, so basically, I mean, you can schedule uh, SMS, Facebook posts, Twitter posts, and emails to send at you know, intervals, times, days, whatever. Um, I just added a backup and restore feature and a, uh, what is it, a, uh, the log feature. Um, I'm actually running a Rafflecopter uh, giveaway real quick. I'll post the, uh, the link in the chat. I'm running a Rafflecopter giveaway for, um, for five of the premium keys. And uh, I should nice. have a couple, um, a couple, what are they, uh, videos. Um, I know Land of Droid is doing a uh, review for me um, sometime this week, and uh, what's his name? It's Will Barlow on uh, YouTube. He does a lot of um, he does a ton of app reviews and stuff like that. He's also doing a review for me sometime this week. So uh, it should. I mean, it's a pretty interesting app. Uh, it's really unique. There's I, 
no other app out there that does anything similar to what it does. So you guys should check it out. Looking forward to it. All right, guys. Well, I think we're going to wrap this up. Uh, <laughs> good show. Good discussion tonight. Uh, not too energetic or anything, but there was a lot of good information that was delivered. Uh, yeah, so uh, thanks, guys. Appreciate you coming on. Uh, check out Team Gummies Forum over on RootsWiki.com. Pick up a T-shirt. And check out Tweezy over on the uh, on the Play Store. And, uh, yeah, you know, Ken, I think I'm going to go buy that because I want to play with it. Sounds cool. <laughs> Awesome. I'm going to buy it, and then I'm just going to entirely bomb Ken with text messages all day and all night. You know what? You know what? Screw you, because I actually thought about that, and the next the next thing that I'm adding in is actually um, a blacklist. I'm going nice. to have a file on my GitHub of blacklist, phone numbers, and uh, Twitter, and emails. So there's somebody... The first, one, the first thing going on that list is that sex hotline, that live links or whatever. Ken calls that 24-7. <laughs> That's going to be the first number blacklisted. Oh, God. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thank you very much to our advertiser tonight. That was Swappa.com. Check them out at SWAPPA.com. It's the very best way to buy and sell gently used Android devices. Next week, uh, we'll have a very special announcement from Cruiser Light. Some goodies. You might want to check it out. We're going to be launching a new product. Yeah. I think you're going to enjoy it. If you want to contribute to Roots Wiki, we're always accepting applications for writers and people creating video content. Email staff at rootswiki.com. If you got any feedback for our program, send it to live at rootslive.com. Check out the site, rootswiki.com. Subscribe to our RSS. Hit up our Facebook, Google+. Plus. We're everywhere. You guys know who we are. Come on. I am your host, Scotty Brown. Post in, a, in the uh, chat room how to get a hold of us. I want to thank Adam Fish from Team Gummy. I want to thank Ken Kiger, R2 Does Inc., for being on the air tonight. And thanks to Andy Krug. He's my producer extraordinaire. Love you guys. We'll see you next Wednesday, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. Don't forget to hit up our Daily Roots podcast. Bye, everybody. <laughs>